Welcome to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and give us a five-star rating on iTunes to continue hustling. This episode is brought to you by Cairo HD, Evo Creative Media, 100% Chiropractic, Cairo Health USA, Imaging Services, Cairo Moguls, New Patients in a Box, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, Life Chiropractic College West, Pro Hockey Cairos, Pro Baseball Cairos, and the IFCO. You can benefit from our full list of sponsors by visiting our sponsor page at chirohustle.com forward slash sponsors. Links in the description. Now let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 593 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I'm your producer, Luke Millett, and here's your host, James Chester. So today we have the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Don Maynard. And if you want to hear the story of the power of chiropractic and innate, stay tuned for the full episode. Welcome back. This is another episode of the Cairo Hustle podcast. They have Don Maynard coming on from South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, she's episode 593. I'm really excited to uh, have her on. She just uh, released a children's book that we're going to touch on. Not the book so much, but why she wrote it. Uh, we're going to talk about um, our love for chiropractic throughout this podcast episode and service and passion. So there's going to be a lot of uh, amazing things we're going to talk about. We're going to touch on her career and uh, where this profession might be going. So. Um, before we get into it, though, I always do the big why. Why do we do what we do at Cairo Hustle? It's, uh, it's our anchor moment. Um, we protect freedom of speech. Uh, if you guys don't know how important that is, um, it's, it's vital. It's vital to the future of, of our constitution and medical freedom, family health freedom. Like These things all live in the same arena. Um, I always kind of joke around, but it's the truth that people don't listen to this episode at all. All they hear is the first two minutes of our show. I want them to know why chiropractic is so vital. And freedom of speech is very important to medical freedom and family health freedom. And right in your book, I'm sure you learned a lot about that, <laughs> those topics. Um, we're, we're philosophically based too. We protect BJ Palmer Sacred Trust. If you don't know what that means, go and search your favorite search engine right now for B.J. Palmer's last words, B.J. Palmer's shaker trust. I guarantee you're going to learn more about chiropractic than you previously did, even if you're a chiropractor, even if you've read it before, go do it again. Um, and then uh, subluxation-centered, subluxation-based chiropractic, um, that's something we support as a show also. And thank you to Sherman and Life West uh, Colleges for supporting us, chiropractic schools. Um, they're sponsors of our show, and that's why we build our connection with them because they are subluxation centered schools. And uh, if you have students, send them to Sherman or Life West. Um, and there's other schools out there, but those are the schools that have joined forces with us, so we support them. Uh, we do believe in innate intelligence and universal intelligence. We believe that when man or woman, the physical gets adjusted, it connects them to man or woman, the spiritual. I know that's a lot of uh, deep dive on the philosophy, but hey, now you guys know why we do what we do. And this is episode 593 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. Don Maynard, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, we open it up really heavy, right? Yeah. Yeah, these that's, people need it. That's a, that's a lot of anchors. <laughs> they need it, though. The world mm -hmm. needs it. Like, yeah. We Absolutely. need to talk about this stuff because no one else is doing a good enough job, in my opinion. And the people that we're entrusting it to, they need to learn what chiropractic is too. Like even the best people out there that are promoting righteousness and freedom, they need to understand chiropractic. Yes, and very much so. And even if you do have anchors, you still need to be reminded that you have them. Amen. Amen. So... Let's let's just friends, families, colleagues, all of them, patients, they might not remembered who you are or why you've become a chiropractor, but let's share your story. Let's uh, take them back to, I think you said you became a chiropractor in 2009. Uh -huh. uh, I graduated in 07 and at the end of 07 and started in 2009. And I really had to think about it too. Um, and since it, this is just who I am and what I do now. 
Um, you know, it's crazy to think that I was almost 30 years old before chiropractic even came on my radar. Um, I was in sports medicine in undergrad. I liked activity. I liked um, taking care of people. And I even actually interned with somebody who suggested that I look into chiropractic school after undergrad. And I just completely blew it off because I had, had no idea why on earth I would do such a thing. Um, I was into taping ankles and rehabbing hips and all that kind of good stuff. So it just, I didn't even know why. Um, and, you know, God always makes things, just puts things in your path, whether, you know, for whatever reason. And um, I, gosh, in my 20s, I was just the headache queen. I had headaches 20 days out of a, out of a month. I was always, I grew up in a very um, outside in medical model family. Um, the doctor actually told me that Excedrin, a Coca-Cola and some chocolate were going to help me get rid. Apparently, I just had a lack of caffeine in my body. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that was kind of that was what my reality was in my 20s. Um, I was on mm -hmm. vacation with a friend whose aunt was a chiropractor. And she got tired of watching me pop these pills and complain about my headache. And um, and I'm sure she saw like a terrible future ahead for this 24 or five year old girl. And uh, she's like, can I adjust you? And I said, listen, if you think you can help me with this, go for it. Because it was really under um, under everything I had been told. This was just my life. This was something I inherited from my mom or my family or it was in my genes. And it was just it was just going to be how I was. And so that adjustment that day didn't end my headaches. Obviously, we all know that, but it set forth this crazy gauntlet ahead of me that just I was so curious and it was the perfect time for me to get adjusted because I was looking into grad schools and and I was just like, ready to burst out in life. And um, I think I was 27, eight, something like that. And it was just the perfect time, the perfect trifecta. And um, I think it was within six months, I was heading off to go sit in a classroom at Sherman to see if chiropractic school was something that was for me. Um, and I even kind of blew it off because I was not really a science girl. Um, and so it just um, it just really ignited some massive curiosities and interests and passions within me. And um, I mean, she saved my life that day completely. When I think about the person I would be now at 50, um, having taken all those drugs for all that amount of time and just being completely lost, um, I Feel, I, you know, filled with gratitude constantly when I think about how different my life would be without the chiropractic adjustment. And even when I went to school, I was like completely outside in oriented still. I remember uh, Val Panaccio, who was this, um, she was our philosophy teacher first quarter, and she was just discussing chiropractic and how uh, people were uh, like, were losing their symptoms just under chiropractic care. And she said something about headaches. And I just raised my hand. And I was like, Oh, could you please teach me the adjustment that gets rid of headaches? I'm still looking for that one. But, you know, I just thought that it was just one thing you did to make something else happen. Cause that's how we're trained, right? If you watch TV, if you take this pill, this is going to happen. Several other things might also happen to you, but you're going to not have this anymore. Um, and so it, you know, as I continued to get adjusted and learn that I actually have an innate intelligence within me and that intelligence is, is, um, ignited when there's no interference in my nervous system and in my body. And, you know, it completely changed the course of what my life would have been. How radical and weird is it that? we get told that it's our gen genes that yeah. make us the way we are and just just 
settle for that. Like, yeah. don't ever think beyond that. Just it's that's, abuse. That's, that's your destiny now. Yeah, it's abuse. Well, people aren't familiar with Bruce Lipton's work either, epigenetics. Mm -hmm. Like, you become the environment that you place yourself into. Right. Your nervous system becomes the person that you allow your nervous system to be cared for. And that's what chiropractic does. And that's why you had the miracles with headaches or the transformation that you went on and became a chiropractor because of it. And what did you say you were doing before uh, chiropractic school? You're taping angles and. That was just in college. Um, okay. I was actually, um, I worked in PR um, for a sports marketing firm and a couple of teams in the National Hockey League. But yeah, I was in PR. I was just having fun doing golf tournaments and <laughs> you know, writing things. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then then you, you're having 20 headaches uh, a month and, mm -hmm. and you get recommended Exeteran, Coca-Cola, and chocolate. Yep. <laughs> a doctor said that. <laughs> and and, and you know, that's just it is we're told it's the genetics deal with it. And then we're never told to consider what our fuel source is. And, Correct. And, and we wonder... and we're also taught that the doctors are, I mean, my parents grew up, the doctor was the smartest person in town. So you just listen to them because that's, they know more than you do. I was always like super respectful. When I had to go to a doctor, mm -hmm. I was always like, oh boy, something's wrong. Right. And, and, and yeah. I always listened to Dr. Green. I'm telling you. Yeah. Like, like I, I didn't start seeing a chiropractor until I was 16. But when my mom took me to like Dr. Green, I always knew that like we pay attention. Yeah. It was a big deal to be there. <laughs> so when they're telling you that your genetics are the cause and take things that aren't the solution, that's it's a, it's a different method than what we share here with chiropractic, right? Completely. <laughs> <laughs> So, so so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, I know that you're um, associated with Dynamic Essentials, mm -hmm. the Palmetto State Chiropractic Association, the Georgia Council of Chiropractic, and uh, the Florida Chiropractic Society, mm -hmm. and ICA, International Chiropractic Association, and the ICPA, which is the International Pediatric Association. So those groups and organizations, they definitely don't tell people to go take uh, et cetera and eat a chocolate bar and drink a Coca-Cola. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, more so than anything, they want people to understand that there's something that interferes with us that stops us from living. And that's a subluxation. And that we actually have the gift of being able to remove subluxation from a spine and help unleash that life and that potential. And to squelch that privilege and to quiet that message and turn it into something else is the one thing that I just don't appreciate in that exists sometimes in chiropractic. Um, and yes, I support those people, yes, because that those are those are those people are in my family and they love what I love and they um I know that I can trust those folks to represent chiropractic in a principled, loving, passionate, and very focused way. And it's it's kind of like the to me it's it reminds me of like the coming home project. Like you go out on this big journey to become this doctor and you figure out like what's out there and then you start to get into practice yeah. and then you start to realize what is dynamic really? and essential. Yes. And you start to realize what, where your marketing dollars should go, which is support of your profession. Mm -hmm. And then you start to figuring out like, who's doing the righteous work within chiropractic and how does that line up with your personal philosophies? Very much so. And then you can, like I said earlier, when we were off camera, I'm like, sometimes it's important for people to just double down on things that they're good at instead of constantly searching for the next thing and trying to like learn something or do like the next cleanse or 
do the next challenge or whatever it might be. Like sometimes we just have to double down on what's good yes, and what we're good at and who we're associated with. And I think that that has a lot to say about the groups that you support. Thank you. Um, let's talk about growth business a little bit. Okay. Um, were you always good at running a chiropractic office? Nope. <laughs> what, what, what did you what did you do to find your way um several things well i'm not going to say several things one of the things that was very important especially when i first started my practice i found my tribe i found people that made sense to me that i either knew or met through people I knew that represented what I wanted to not only embody in chiropractic, but I wanted to develop and nurture. Um, I left out of that whole bio that the my first couple of years in practice, I was working for personal injury chiropractors and literally almost left the profession. Um, and finally found some people with whom I could root and learn and grow and nourish. Um, and one of the biggest things that I learned early on, and it took me so long to figure out how to both release and grab on to this concept is that you can do all the things outside that are suggested to you. You even mentioned scripts, like you can do all those things, but everything that is going to make you grow and develop and become attractive to your community and loving to your community, it's all within you. And when I learned that it actually was within me and I didn't have to be scared of it or um, afraid that it wasn't enough when I knew that it was all in me and that I was more or less chosen for this profession. It gave me a license to be able to be more confident in my office or be more confident outside of my office. I try to do everything I can because chiropractic is an inside out job. Um, innate intelligence is an inside out thing. I try to do everything that way also outside of the office. So, you know, we, I try to have inside out conversations with people, even when I'm not in the office. Um, I think one of the, when I first started reading again, that I didn't have to read in school when I first started reading the green books again for me and not for the instructors, the very best quote that I ever, um, I think that I ever came up with, I've got it in posters all over the place, um, was from Palmer's Law of Life. And it said, if we're able to give one virtue uh, to a chiropractor, but I also kind of reflect that to people that come to my office. If we can relay one virtue to the chiropractor, it would be to give him the joy of innate. Because the innate man is hard to satisfy. He's always moving. He's always looking. He's always searching inside and really trying to become more in contact with himself. And the person who's just working with their educated brain is just satisfied. And they just say, this is what I've done. This is what my life is. I'm not moving on. This is, this is what we've got. And so they're, you know, the joy of an eight giving you that insatiable um, passion to be able to express um, how to, how to, run your office, how to communicate to the people in your office that, yeah, you might have a spine that looks like it's been taken a run over by, you know, a roller coaster, but you still have an innate intelligence within you. And that can't change unless you allow it to. And so 
when I started really looking within and, and gaining and kind of pulling those things out of myself, rather than focusing on building my practice, I focused on building chiropractic and how I could best be that person. You made the Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is brought to you by Cairo HD, Evo Creative Media, 100% Chiropractic, Cairo Health USA, Imaging Services, Cairo Moguls, New Patients in a Box, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, Life Chiropractic College West, Pro Hockey Cairos, Pro Baseball Kairos, and the IFCO. You can benefit from our full list of sponsors by visiting our sponsor page at kairohustle.com forward slash sponsors. Links in the description. Now let's hustle. So you doubled down on what you loved. Doubled down on what I loved. And you stopped doing things that weren't congruent with what you wanted chiropractic to be in your life. Yes, 100%. When you mentioned that's what what you were going to title this one, I thought that was great. Well, you you, you have to stop wanting, I think, mm-hmm. with a lot of things. We have to stop wanting what we want it to look like. We have to stop wanting how much money we want. We have to stop wanting what everything is supposed to be. And sometimes we just have to go and live and be it and do it. And I think that we get so caught up with, wanting to do it way a coach tells us to do it, wanting to do it the way somebody else thinks that we should be doing it. And so many times we forget our own vision. Right. We forget like our own missions. We forget why we started doing something in the first place and we stop having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I couldn't imagine working in a PI mill. Oh. Like, like what, what, so what, what, what <laughs> like, you know, I know there's a lot of docs out there that watch my show. They're like, gosh, I'd take a couple of PI cases if I could have them mm-hmm. like right now. They'd be like, hey, do you got a PI case? I'd take it <laughs> <laughs> like for real. Yeah. Um, it's not a bad business, but it, it's you have to understand like what type of practice you want to run. Yes. And are you running a practice for people? Or are you running a business for chiropractic? 100 percent. Big difference. Yes. Very big difference. Mm-hmm. Yes. I definitely have a practice for people. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I think that when a chiropractor goes back to one of my favorite chiropractors of all time, his name is Patrick Smith. Um, he, he, he runs oh. a, mem- he, he runs a pat, uh, membership practice. Yes. He's one of my favorite people I've also. Um, well, Pat was in my first movie, Chiropractor, the documentary. I really got to know him. Mm-hmm. And I sat in on his lay lecture. Mm-hmm. And he gives the most brilliant, like new patient education talk. Like if anybody wants to learn how to convey the message of chiropractic, reach out to Pat Smith. Like the guy has it nailed. Mm -hmm. Um, But as I got to know him, he is like, yeah, man, I came from Chicago. I was like, I came from Chicago too. And he's like, yeah, I ran a big insurance practice and Mm -hmm. I hated it. And he goes, and every time me and my buddies would go take care of each other at any of our practices, Mm -hmm. we walked past all the therapies, Mm-hmm. The STEM units, all of it. He's like, we laid face down, we adjusted each other, we went and got food. Yeah. He goes, not once did we say, hey, what kind of uh, therapies do you have that we can try today? Hold on, let me get my hot pack. <laughs> well, that was like the big thing mm-hmm. is like, he's like, and then I came to Colorado and he's like, I charge people a fair fee. Mm-hmm. I tell them that I'm going to be their chiropractor and I'm going to take care of them till one of us blows up. Yep. And then I shake their hands and then we laugh and now I, they're my patient and I'm their chiropractor. Mm-hmm. And as I got to know this method, and I know that you practice that way too, mm-hmm. like it really is for the people. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. And I'm sure it's really fulfilling for you to be the provider. Oh, yes. I love that the words, we are a lifetime family chiropractic office are on my wall. And people look at it and they go, that's cute. Yeah. And then they become, and now they've been here 10, 12 years and, you know, just, they get it. Well, there's also something about business then too, because a continuity patient 
month to month to month mm -hmm. is much better than an insurance bubble patient. Mm -hmm. And then the denials and then the, we have to make sense of how to keep this person under care because their insurance benefits have run out. Like right. when you run a business the right way with the right types <laughs> of methods that sustain and it's not constantly chasing and you do what you want, then the business yes. gratifies and it comes to you. And I think that that's the really cool part about today's conversation with you is when you go from a, a path and you build what you appreciate and love, mm -hmm. then the service is easier to provide. Oh, very much so. I just had that conversation with someone, uh, one of my patients last week, because he was kind of complimenting my business model. And I said, plus, I hope you also realize that if I tell you to come back tomorrow, it's because I actually really believe you should, you know, I'm not going to benefit any, you know, it's, I'm actually saying that because I think that it would be beneficial to your life. And he's, that's why I'm here, you know? And so it gives them ease also. So community, how do you plug into your community? How, how do you um, nurture that relationship? Um, well, like I said, you know, it's plastered on my walls that we are a lifetime family chiropractic office. And so I really do a lot of stuff from the inside out. I have kids that have been with me that are in high school now that were <laughs> kindergartners when they started. Um, and I go to their football games. I sponsor their soccer team. Um, I, we have, you know, I've got kids that invite me to their theater performances and I'm tearing up in the thing because I'm so <laughs> proud of these kids that are my kids and I call them my kids. Um, and so that's that's really the big, you know, it, it's kind of like that center tent, center spoke or the center of the wheel and I just poke out that way. It, so it is very much an inside out thing also. Um, I asked their kid, I asked the kids, how was practice today? How was school today? You know, do, do you want to have your coach come in here? I'd love to meet your coach. Do you want to have your teacher come in? I would love to meet your teacher. Um, it's easier when you're having fun. Ah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Well, let's talk about your, your kid's book. Okay. If um, <laughs> yeah. Tell us the, the why behind the book. Well, honestly, there was literally no plotting, planning, or why with it. Um, I have, you know, it was so innately driven that it's one of my favorite things that I've done since I chose to get married to my husband. I mean, it's like, it's just such a valuable tool. I We were literally watching a movie one night, and I was thinking about an Instagram post or something that I needed to work on and, and something just popped into my head. And so I typed it out and then something else type popped into my head. And so I typed it out. And next thing I know, I have a whole note in my phone that is a book. And I read it again and I went, what the heck? I think I just did this. My husband was actually asleep. I elbowed him. I was like, you have to listen to this. I, I think I just did this. And he's like, that's amazing. I read it. And he was like, whoa, hold on. Turns the light on. I read it again. And it was just absolutely 100% nothing but a gift from an eight. It just flowed through me. And um, after that, I read it. The next morning, I woke up and thought, Oh, I wrote a book last night. I should look into that. I wonder how one puts a book together. And it became just the easiest, most fun and uh, wonderful creative process. And, uh, and it is a chiropractic children's book. And it talks about chiropractic. And it is um, adorable. And we just, I had such a great time doing it. So it was uh, such a gift. So tell people what the book is called and where they can find it. I may or may not have one right beside me, <laughs> but it's called My Smart Body and it is on Amazon. Um, and I also um, do some bulk orders through smartbodybooks.com. Um, I have, I can um, 
send bulk easier than Amazon does. We also did, um, I also did an activity book. So it's a coloring book. And what I love about it is, um, first of all, they say that, and, and I'm not the brainiac neuroscientist that a lot of chiropractors are, but um, coloring is the closest thing to meditation um, that you can do, you know, while doing something physical. And so the coloring book says things like, I have a smart body and you can color that. We go to the chiropractor because that's what my family does. My nervous system repairs me while I sleep. And if we can create those processes in children, adults, whoever is doodling in the coloring book, um, we can start to change a thought process and you don't fall for something like take Excedrin, a Coke and a, and a chocolate when you have a headache. Know that your body is repairing while you're resting. My smart, smart body book. I love it. And yeah. I, I really like the way that you um, produced it. And a, a lot of people, you know, I, I had the hardest time. I'm going to tell you, I had the hardest time. Um, before I started working in a chiropractic clinic, I had a buddy named Michael Hogan and he would say this word innate to me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he was in chiropractic school. We were bartending together. I'm like, I'm like, dude, would you quit saying that word to me? Cause I have no idea what it means. And it took me seriously, almost a decade, a decade, 10 years for me to actually understand what that one word meant. Right. So the title of this show today um i just love because innate is a part of all of us and my best explanation to people is I, I can't remember who i learned this from but if you cut your finger you don't have to tell it to heal it heals naturally because innate wants your body to stop bleeding mm -hmm. and it's going to heal itself naturally it doesn't need anything extra it just seems, simply needs no interference and when you understand the simple philosophy of subluxation and innate and when a chiropractor corrects a vertebral subluxation, it's like your finger healing. You just don't have to tell it what to do anymore. It just does it what it's supposed to because that's what the body does. It's self-healing, self-regulating. Yeah. And when kids understand this, that that's the way the body's supposed to do what it's supposed to do, now that's a game changer. Or yes. that's the first step forward to making a healthier family. You know, I always, right. you know, joke, it's not a joke, but I used to always talk about like, how do recycling happen? Well, it happened because they taught the kids how to recycle in school. Mm -hmm. The kids brought the recycling home to the families and now we have recycling programs in most cities. Yes. But this is how we can start this movement of chiropractic with families is we can start it by giving this good information to kids. And then we create healthier families. And if we do it the right way, it becomes a great conversation topic and sparks a future, possibly the next generation of chiropractors. So really cool. Who, what age group benefits most from my smart body? My smart body is definitely um, on geared towards younger kids, probably three to eight. Okay. Um, but older kids love it and it does have big words in it. So um, what what I found is that because it has big words in it, the parents have to read it, too. And then <laughs> they come back in and they sh say to me, shockingly, that was super simple. Now I get what you're talking about in the office all the time. So. It really is because of the images and things like that for younger kids, but everybody's going to dig it. Well, I love today's conversation. I could probably talk to you for a whole lot longer, but let's close out with two more topics. Okay. Um, mentors. Hmm. Who has helped you become who you are today? Well, um, you know, I think... I think it all starts with Dr. Deccan at Sherman College teaching me philosophy, just getting in that and kneading that dough.
um, really sprouting some some ideas. And uh, and I would have and oddly enough, um, I started at Sherman. I transferred and graduated from life for no other reason than I wanted a change of scenery. Um, and uh, so I always say that. Sherman made me a chiropractor and life made me a doctor um, because and, and that's probably just because I went there first. And so those really big, deep seeds of that philosophy came early. Um, but, you know, as uh, after school and as I began um, to practice, um, just being around people at Dynamic Essentials and some things that were planted, Sigafoos and Dr. Santo, um, audios from back in the day that I listened, that I was able to just listen to when I was running or driving down the road. Um, and uh, so that was, that's probably a good start. Well, <laughs> it's it, a long it's, list. Yeah, it, it's pretty powerful what we listen to is who we become. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, you know, it's cliche, but what you pay for, you pay attention to. Mm -hmm. But really, that's your time units. So yes. what you give your time to is who you become. And yeah. I think it's really important that we all find mentors, that we all find a cadence of philosophy that anchors us down and gives us a belief system. And then we should trade our time units for things that we love. And we should learn from people that have been there before us and learn how to ask for help from them and become students. There's never, you're never too old to learn stuff. And I think it doesn't matter how old you are, you should consider going to a dynamic essentials. You should consider finding mentors within this profession. And um, yeah, not, never take it for, for, for granted that you have access to some of the greatest minds in the world within this chiropractic profession. Some of the biggest hearts, and I think that that's what really gives us so much value of what we do at Hustle is we bring these stories to light and we give people something to be proud of. And we remind them why chiropractic is such a powerful profession and it is a science, philosophy and art. And everybody has their own stories. You know, I think that that's what I hope to do with this after a thousand episodes. I hope to create this amazing story brand that chiropractic has made an impact on so many practitioners and practices and communities that stories like ours today, people can say every single one of those productions was a miracle yeah. because there was a reason why that person went on to be a servant for this beautiful profession. And I do appreciate you being on with uh, 593 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. Let's close people out with a miracle story that you've seen and your practice since you've been out there saving people's lives. Uh, uh, oddly enough, I think my favorite miracle story didn't even happen in my office. Um, I was at the office one day. I saw on uh, Facebook something popped up. One of my moms had posted this big, long um, story. And so I, it kind of got my attention. And I'm glad it did because usually I just kind of pass over things there. But um, I read the entire thing and basically she had just delivered her second child uh, maybe a month before this. And she was walking around, holding the baby, taking care of it. Meanwhile, her wild and crazy three-year-old is running around the house. And by virtue of doing that, he stumbled down the stairs from the second floor to the first and was completely unresponsive. Um, her first, her first inclination was to call 911. They lived on a military base. So all of that happened. He was rushed to the hospital and, um, they couldn't find anything wrong with him. They sent him home and this kid was a limp noodle. Um, this kid, mindly, mind you, uh, always ran around my office crazy and flinging Legos and everything. So, um, I saw, I saw her post, I called her and said, you need me now. Can I come to you? And she said, yes, please. You know, I can't believe that you're offering that. And I said, yes, I got my table in the car. We're, I'm coming. Um, I walked in the door and there's little Ethan just, just 
pale and sad looking and hardly lifts his head when his chiropractor walks in the door and he just didn't even move. Um, and so I just got on the couch. I adjusted him. He took the biggest, most refreshing breath in. He sat straight up, his eyes popped open and he pointed his finger up and to his head and then his neck. And he said, you adjusted me. And he jumped off the couch, started running around. He had like these little deer legs that were just weak and wobbly. Ran around the living room. His mom's going, oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, be careful, be careful. But he was completely changed just like that. And that mother has moved. She calls me all the time. She asks me where to go, what to do, um, and tells everyone that story. And it, it was just the most beautiful thing I've seen ever. It was wonderful. Really, really amazing. Um, I, I get a chance to get those stories from doing the show. So I live by osmosis and <laughs> I, I get a lot of cool messages that translate through this podcast. So thank you for sharing today. Um, is there anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to touch on today? No, I think it, wonderful talking with you. It was great. Yeah, it, it's it, it's really good for me to be on the side of it too. I was giving a talk down this weekend in Atlanta to the Georgia Council of Chiropractic, and I said to them, "I never made this show for me. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to do just listen to what I have to say, how important I am, the messages that I have." I said the real value was in asking the people that are out there doing. The profession of chiropractic their stories so i appreciate you sharing your story today and uh yeah i, I look forward to the next time we get to uh have you on again and um congratulations on the book and go to smartbodybooks.com buy yourself some bulk of these and uh reach out to dr don and uh have a happy holidays and thank you so much thank you you too appreciate <laughs> all right. it all right bye for now Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.